Greetings, dear people of God at Trinity and beloved friends beyond. Thank you for joining me for this week's Reflections from the Other Side. It's been two weeks since my last reflection, since we took a week off after Easter. Those words over the phone, you have cancer, sounded like an accusation, caught, guilty. I have cancer? My first thought was not, what do I do now, but what did I do? Actually, what did I do wrong? How did I get it? Why me? Now, just to be clear, to me, God has never been the one who tests punishment, punishes or cherry picks for a special place in heaven, those who die or who experience suffering or sadness in this life. So I wasn't blaming God for the diagnosis. I was blaming myself. I shoulda, I woulda, I coulda. Then there was the onslaught of treatment and the fight for insurance coverage and more treatment that captured my attention and energy, while the loving attention and energy of so many, so many of you, captured my heart and lifted me up. And here I am, deeply grateful, cancer-free. And so, am I living happily ever after, blissfully, blessedly breathing in the gift of each new day? Finding a new normal? Sometimes, truly, truly sometimes. But other days, I do not want to be where I am. I want to be done. I want to be back the way I was. I don't want to be grabbing a, net, a nap in the Whole Foods parking lot on my way to Stinson because I'm afraid I will fall asleep at the wheel. I don't want to cut off a wonderfully congenial dinner with friends because the queasiness has overtaken me. I don't want to feel jealous of my twin sister's tennis games several times a week, let alone feel exhausted after an all too short walk into the wind on Stinson Beach to have such problems. Isn't it time to be giving instead of receiving? And don't get me started about the miracle of immunotherapy that has been shown to hold my particular cancer at bay while constantly reminding me of the dreaded possibility of recurrence and filling me with fatigue and queasiness. Sometimes I just want to go to bed. On the evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear. The time, Passover week. The place, Jerusalem. The scene, an upper room behind locked doors. The air is thick with trauma over what has happened and terrible uncertainty about the future. Those very first disciples must have been utterly terrified in that locked room. The worst outcome they could imagine had just happened. Their teacher and their friend was dead, crushed by the remorseless, relentless force of the Roman Empire. Now they assumed they were next. So their fear led to locked doors as fear always does. Nadia Boltz Weber writes that the doors were locked that Easter night for fear of what might get in, but the biggest danger came from inside the room, not out. They locked themselves in with all their blame and despair and shame. But Jesus has none of it. After all, didn't he come to proclaim release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed? So it is here, sitting amidst fear and behind locked doors, amidst blame and justifications that the disciples encounter the risen Christ. He crashes their pity party, Nadia says. Notice, Jesus doesn't wait until they overcome their fear, stop blaming and justifying their actions or inactions. He takes them as they are. When we're at the point in life when we have blown it completely, as Nadia says, when we are so undeniably aware of our need for God's grace, that is when Jesus comes to us. That is when Jesus comes to us and says, my child, don't be afraid of what I have already defeated. Because in the most uneven exchange in history, Christ takes all our failings and exchanges them for his love, for his own blessedness. He says, you are mine now. And so it is all the brokenness that comes with you. He says to them, peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. 
Then he shows us the very wounds of God, wounds that bear witness to the crazy, beautiful love of God for us. He shows them who he is. He shows them as he is wounded. God takes us as we are in the midst of our fears, our suffering, our resentments, our bitterness and self-pity in whatever rooms we or someone else has locked us inside. In whatever ways we have fallen short or not even begun, God takes us as we are. And he says, Jesus says, peace be with you as you are in this very moment. May the breath of God's spirit comfort you as you are. Nadia says, life is too short to spend even one more minute locked inside rooms of fear and blame and shame. Not when forgiveness is real and Jesus is breathing peace on us and saying, be free, be free. How might you be freed this week? this moment in your life? What locked rooms hide you away from real life, from your life, from you as you are in all of your brokenness and beauty and blessedness? I think I'm going to go for a walk with the wind at my back. Amen.